It's week one of the NFL preseason of EA Sports. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. And leading them out there, their 6'5 quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, we're talking about ordering dinner. Order. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Now here are the Seahawks in great shape to start their first drive. And they will be led out by their 6'3 quarterback. And so often when you've stolen a possession, as they just did there. On the first play. First play, picking up the fumble. The natural inclination is to attack, go after them big. Sometimes what you just want to do is put the ball in the hands of one of your best players in one of their favorite plays and establish your dominance that way. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Now a man open down the middle of the field and inside the 20 before he's brought down. 16 yards, a first down. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten, so now they can keep grinding out first downs, and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Extra point right down the middle, and that makes the score 7-0. one away. Fielded in the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. At their own 25 yards. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That could be a deflator for the football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Uh, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brings up second and nine. Now a handoff here to his running back. He takes this for three to the 29. 
the ball. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Brings up third down. They'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Gain of 21 yards. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. And he'll give it here to his running back. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they will pay dividends as the game progresses. Second and two. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. That's one of the dangers of the quick game. If you only have a two or three step drop, if you don't get the ball to someone open right away, those defenders are right near the line of scrimmage and then get on top of you in a heartbeat. And again, this time with the tailback. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. Oh, he tried to pitch it, and the ball's loose. And the Seahawks have recovered. The pass. A fumble. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Throwing middle, and it's complete. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. He was brought That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And the Seahawks are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Four-yard line. Now a handoff here to his running back. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. He'll try to run this one in. And he pushes forward, but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. He'll try to run this one in. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. 
A great effort there with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Good. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 14 to nothing. nothing. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken about seven yards deep, and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. 25-yard line. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. You always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Number 21. It's a gain of six. And it's third down. Out of the gun now on third down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them... Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. The 20. And he will score. Touchdown, Las Vegas. A big play there. 62 yards. And the Raiders have cut it back to within a score. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, the they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over, this game could be 88 and out the gate early. What? 88 and out the gate? Yeah. What's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. Usually, meant that thing's done. Well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And we get a glance here, Charles, at his two touchdown runs. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And they had the touchdown during the last drive, and I'm guessing that you like the balance they had on that last drive. And I loved it. Forget liking it. Absolutely love what they were doing because to be ahead of the defense that much where every play call you have, run or pass, is working pretty well for you. Makes you look like a genius. It really does. It also lets you know that your preparation was pretty good, and now the defense has to do all the adjusting. Second and 15. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And that's caught inside the 30. Bring it! Bring it! And he will finally be taken out of bounds. It's a big play there for Seattle. 78 yards. We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with... But don't fumble the football. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Three-yard line. And again, they'll go right back to their fullback. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. 
So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to So that drive, four plays, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded near the back of the end zone, and no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Now the Vegas offense heading back out there. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. we just saw that's a great example of a team that was really amped up they've been playing so well yet they didn't get over excited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play instead they created their own big play with a pick six this one may be over yeah it's just the first half but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already and his kick is good a heck of a play there defensively getting the interception Navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And how does he rally the troops, so to speak? He's played well, but they're down big on the scoreboard. How does he get his guys going? And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked off here the 29. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. I'm not sure, Brandon. We've seen a sloppier played game this year for a team on offense. Turn it over four times and expect to win? No chance whatsoever. And look, I have no idea what the ratio is about turn over four times and how that correlates to winning or losing. But I'll guarantee you, it's not very good. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. It's second and inches. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly and he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. From 10 yards out, and the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. Well, the lost sleep that the defensive coordinator had all week preparing for this game, a good portion of it was trying to prepare for him because yeah. he's absolutely a phenomenal player. And a lot of times around the goal line, they know it's going to him. It's just so hard to stop. And that's where it really becomes difficult because you're exactly right. They know it's going to him, yet they still can't stop it. That tells you when you're a dominant player. Point after, right down the middle. And the route is on here in this first half. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. And the Raiders. Well, hello. I mean, it took him a while to get him a rep, but that's quite an introduction to this game. And not just hello. How about goodbye to the defense as he went past them? Big-time run on his first carry of the game. 
And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 at the 28-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offense coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take it. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. A loss of six yards. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Makes the score Seahawks 35. Great so the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Let's over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this... And that's caught inside the 35. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? The kicker off. And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys. Boy, a rough crowd. No football for six months already. We're skipping halftime. All right, let's get right back to the action. We're set for quarter three. Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook, one play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him. Though. Find him. Find him. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit. 
even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Yeah, good work bringing that one back as he picks up about 16 on the return. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And Charles, the good news, they got the stop defensively. The bad news, this is a huge hole that they're in right now. How do they start to dig out of it? That's a great question because we're not even going to talk about how do they win it, right? We want to see how they can kind of claw back and at least make themselves feel better about the game because this one is likely out of reach, but maybe one possession at a time. Try and play a little bit better and have some respect when you come out of the game. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 39. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one 28 yards on the ground. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the second game. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. When people talk about plays being blown up, that's exactly what they're talking about. That's exhibit A for physical play. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Now we're gonna get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Definitely the last thing you wanna see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And they're gonna get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. And it's fourth down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And the 13-year man puts it through. And that will knock this down to still a very large 29-point deficit. Raiders 13. I'm kind of surprised by that, that they kicked the field goal. I guess you get some points, but this deficit third quarter, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. When you're down that much, Very kicking good. a field goal, does it feel a little bit maybe waving the white waving flag? The you just want to get out of here? Yeah, I, I think you got to go ahead and try and get some bigger points on your point. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just now been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good, soft in spots. There's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Challenged the play, it did not pay off. 
and that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player, you threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination of whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. It's a game of well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That good for 19 and a first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Right back to him on first down. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight real. It's not going to make the highlight real, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Flush to his right. On the run, he'll let this. And this is caught inside the five. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it, an eyelash. Dropped at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Tried to punch it in with the extra B for the fullback on third and goal, but it didn't work. And you think to yourself, more size, more physicality, you're going to wait. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. It's the fullback ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And this Seahawks offense continues to pour it on. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try again. They go to the big man, second time he gets it done. Almost as if they were feeling like he was establishing a rhythm. Give it to him again and again, and how about the end result? Finishes it off in the end zone. Touchdown, great run, and the score. 13. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded near the back of the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? so tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together but every now and then partner you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things and i think that's what they're looking for right now yeah you talk about going to your playmakers they probably need to do it find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else at the 25 yard line now a handoff here to his running back. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two-yard 
yards, the loss, and now third and 12. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup, and that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. You're watching preseason football on EA Sports. The Raiders on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third down and 12. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seahawks take back over. It has been a dream start to the preseason thus far as they look to finish things strong in the fourth quarter. They go play action here on first down. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 11 yards there, first down. Tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Nothing open downfield, and he had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throw. Became an all-arm throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And some room to work. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And that is too far out in front. He couldn't haul it in. Incomplete. The Seahawks send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And this ball is going to be down now right at the 10-yard line. Good spot. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Mike 56, Mike 56. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick hitter here, it's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards on Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. It's a first down on a game. Of 10. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column, but as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. 
Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back in. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off at the 33. And they're going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. CD, this defense, man. <laughs> At this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The quarterback set. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The defense shaking their heads, not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Five brings up second and five. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind a line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. They'll look to throw here. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Tonight's final score is Seahawks. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.